Welcome to the House of Ginger, podcast number five. Today we're going to be reading from my book, Wear Turkey, by Ginger Venturini. Cover art by Brian Venturini. Wear Turkey, W-E-R-E dash Turkey. The innocence of Thanksgiving is over. Where Turkey is to be a new cult classic for generations to come. Driving along the interstate, sunglasses on, we pass by the usual signage for fast food joints, gas stations, and sideshow attractions, only found in the south. We were on our way over the swamp and through miles of cattle farms to grandmother's house. The lull of the road was beginning to wear on our nerves as we both clocked out an hour early from work to beat the heavy holiday traffic. It usually takes about three hours to reach Grandmom's house. Today seemed longer. As we battled through with other drivers on the same race course we called I-4. We anticipated a delightful four-day weekend full of delicious edible food that only grandmothers make. The sun had begun to sink below the horizon in a sea of oranges, pinks, and blues. The moon was out in full now, shining like a new dime. We had turned off the interstate and onto the side road that would take us to Grandma's neck of the woods. Clunk! Clunk! Something landed on the roof and rolled off down the back side of the car. Now that it was darker, we debated... Do we get out of the car or not? Turning on our cell phone flashlights, we cautiously left the safe confines to venture into the unknown. We made our way towards the trunk, shining our lights to beam on the creature. Nothing moved. This gave us the confidence to get closer to it. It looked like a bunch of feathers all askew. What a large bird, I whispered loudly. My husband said, wild buzzard with confidence. With no desire to give it CPR, we hurried back inside the safety of the car and got on our way. No one else had turned down the street with us, so there was no witness to our crime. Arriving at Grandmom's one hour later than the usual three, road-weary, work-weary, and just straight-up weary, we sat around the small kitchen table drinking milk and enjoying a few cookies before heading to bed. We shared our story of the strange bird with Grandmom. She shared a story about the wolves that were on TV last week. They had been seen roaming the neighborhood, getting into trash cans, and occasionally the family chihuahua. So glad we didn't run into them on our way here, my husband stated. I nodded in agreement. After changing into pajamas and brushing our teeth, we settled down to sleep under the Chanel blankets, reassured our morning was to be bright and glorious with the smell of brewing coffee and yummy treats fresh from the oven. Awake and not sure why, I sit up. Do I have to pee? No, a noise from outside. There it is again. That has to be the wind. It's nothing. Yes, I need to pee. After the noise of flushing the toilet is done, I hear it again. What on earth? Not wanting to wake anyone, I stumble to the hall closet to find a flashlight. Grandmom's cupboards are prepped and ready for the apocalypse or alien invasion, whichever comes first. I get past the aluminum caps into the back where the open pack of batteries are located and find my old pink flashlight. Some moonlight glows through various windows as I make my way downstairs, trying to avoid the two creaks that are inevitable. I pause to listen, and again, the noise comes. Did Grandmom get a pet? She didn't say anything at dinner. I head to the back door, careful to move the curtain aside, to reveal the four squares of glass that make up the upper half of the door frame. Nothing can be seen in the dark abyss of a backyard. 
as the moon plays peekaboo with the clouds. I hear the noise and turn on the flashlight, only to discover the batteries are dead. The supply closet, however, held a crate full, and now I wanted to throw the flashlight for lack of its usefulness. My brain says, get batteries, check it out. My body says, go back to bed. And my gut says, do you really want to know? Back upstairs, I put batteries in the flashlight, grab an aluminum cap as a precaution, and go back to bed. I don't look at the clock in my desire for a moment of sanity and possible sleep. Awake. What is wrong with my body today? I normally sleep so cozily at grandmom's, all tucked in with the smell of old lady house and fresh laundered towels. Why that mix, I don't know, but it has always been so. Looking outside, the sun is not up or out, and again, I am wide awake. Do I need to pee? Yes. Grr. No more milk and cookie treats before bed. Where is that flashlight? That noise again. Almost scared the piss right out of me. Yanking back the covers, I ran to the bathroom before I wet my PJ bottoms. After washing my hands, I reach for the flashlight. It falls due to my wet grip towards the floor, stopping at my toe first before hitting the fuzzy yellow carpet. Well, I can't keep quiet, my brain tells my mouth as I yell out, oh, which in turn wakes up my husband. Now it is his turn to pee. All done. We're headed back to the bedroom together when we hear the noise again. We look at each other in the glow of the wall nightlights, and I mouth to him that I heard it earlier, but I didn't see anything. Reassured, we head to the bedroom. Noise, noise, louder, loudest, which rattled my gut to say, dang it, what on earth, my body whispers. Loitering in the hallway, outlined by the continuous glow of nightlight shaped as pumpkins, we now quicken to the bedroom to grab the cell phone, for the option of 911 and another menial weapon to throw at whatever is making the noise. Together, we move slowly, our reinforcements in hand. Again, the noise. If this is a tree limb bouncing off the house, I will be so happy and mad at the same time. We make our way to the kitchen, where the noise seems most pervasive, and wait for it again. A second later, we are not disappointed. Bum, bum, bum. Wear turkey. Check it out for yourself at Amazon.com in Kindle format as well as paperback format. Again, that's W E R E dash turkey. Wear turkey by Ginger Venturini. G I N G E R Venturini. V E N T U R I N I. Thank you again for visiting the House of Ginger. I look forward to talking with you again soon, and I hope you're having a great day.